All right, we are at the top of the hour. It is time for another Equipment Zone training webinar. I am lucky to be joined by my friend, my coworker, my colleague, Amy Krulowitz. Amy, how are you? I'm great. It's a beautiful day here in New Jersey. Spring. Oh, yeah. Well, you've earned it, right? Coming out of winter and all that. It's sunny and there's a nice crispness to the air, but but it's spring is here. It's spring is here. I love that energy, right? Well, we've got a great topic and you are just the right person for our audience. First, let me say, uh, yes, we are recording this webinar and it will be available on our YouTube channel as are several hundred other uh, training webinars. So we hope that you'll go check them out. But we're going to have something special today. We're going to have you, Amy Krulitz, who is on our sales team, uh, a veteran of uh, inkjet technology. And Amy, you share a passion and a pretty deep knowledge of all things dye sublimation. Is that a true statement? Well, I, you know, I like to play. And <laughs> uh, short story, uh, you know, I know I've told this before and I'll bore you all again with it, but you know, when I was 13 years old, I got my first camera and set up a dark room in my parents' basement and had an enlarger and I shot film and I developed film and I did the whole thing. And That's so cool. <laughs> and I used to get such a thrill about seeing that image come up in the tray of chemicals, you know, with the red light on and it was just me, it was me and my music and, and watching and it was magic. It was absolutely magic. It and is. what I like about dye sublimation, it brings me back to those days. Ah, that's because cool. when I take that piece of paper where an image has been printed and I put it onto something and then I peel it away after the time is up, it's magic. The, the, it, to make an image that way, who would have ever really thought is. it would come this far? And <laughs> so uh, it's near and dear to me. <laughs> I love that. That's a great story. You can share it every time. It warms mm -hmm. my heart and it, it gives us some insight as to your, some of your secret sauce and magic. And I can't believe that it's been really two years, over two years, since we've had a conversation specifically, the two of us together on dye sublimation. So it's a little overdue. So I hope our audience will um, uh, forgive us. And in the meantime, as you know very well, there have been some changes, there have been some additions, there have been some um, updates, and so can't wait to cover that with you. Um, those important developments are really what's at the heart of this webinar today. And, and in terms of those of you who have tuned in, thank you again, um, and those who might watch later, this session is going to be an overview. We're going to highlight each of the categories and the basic lineup of, of from small to, to super, I call it super extra large now, just to you know throw in an extra adjective. But all of the Epson dye sublimation printers from top to bottom, start to finish. And uh, Amy, you're going to give us some insights because I'm not qualified. I mean, sure, I could read something off a flyer, but we'd rather hear it from you. And I think our audience will be better informed and uh, pick up some tips along the way. So how's that for an intro? Is that, oh is that, is that our webinar in a That's nutshell? We're done. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. No, we're not done. We haven't even started. So I'm going to share my screen, and I've got some slides prepared. And then, of course, Amy, I'll ask a couple of questions, but feel free sure. to jump in and add some value where you think it should be. And we'll probably have a shorter session, maybe 25 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We'll see. We sometimes wander, don't we? Yes, so, we do wander. Uh, we, 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 we tend to carry away um, with some great stories. Here's a wonderful um, die sub printer lineup photo from the from the little one in the right hand corner to the larger one in the upper left um, so yeah let's get started so okay. the epson die sub printer lineup is ready for us and i hope this makes sense I, it makes sense to me amy i kind of i don't want to like i'm not trying to take credit for something but i just the more i looked at this the more i realized it seems to me like we have four core categories of the of the epson printers and so starting at the you know, the, the essence of, of what we're trying to share, we, is it fair to say we have a, a home or a craft, maybe a craft and hobby startup? That would be the, yeah. the entry, the starter? That's a, good, um, that, that's a good description of it. I mean, you know, the F-170 is a great little printer and the demand for it has been off the charts. That's um, true. And that is true. It's good for two reasons. It's, it's good for the person who is a craft and hobbyist. 
and doesn't want to or isn't ready to make that financial investment. But it's also good for people who want to dip their toe in the water with buy sublimation. Great. So not everybody knows exactly what the potential is yet for them and their business. And if they start with a 170 and start making some smaller items, you know, maybe make some keychains and make some mugs and make some coasters and see how that helps their business that they're already mm -hmm. in as mm -hmm. an added product, they get used to that and then they can expand to future models. So it's a good dip your toe in the water printer. I like that. I like the way you said, just, just want to dip the toe in. We're not ready to jump <laughs> into the deep end. And this is a desktop model and we're going to share an image here in a little bit. Right. This will be something that uh, is the least expensive, smallest printer, the F-170. That's Maybe and I and I'm not trying to be. I hope nobody takes this as as a throwing as my kids would say throwing shade. I don't even know what that means, but this is not a disrespectful statement to say that this is a craft or a hobby or a home printer. Um, it's just a smaller printer, and I'm telling you what, like you said, they have been flying off the shelves. But what we would probably more consider an entry level die sub printer would be the F570 Pro. Is that true? Right, right. Now, this is something, uh, of course, the F-170 is new since uh, our last webinar. That's true. Days. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. And uh, the F-570 was in the marketplace during that time. However, now it's the F-570 Pro. So what the F-570 Pro is, it, it is the same printer. Um, it's a 24-inch desktop printer, which is great. But what they did was they made it greater. Uh, and gotcha. they added their new RIP software. So the Epson Edge software is an Epson branded product. You, you know, up until recently, Epson partnered uh, with RIP software companies. So gotcha. uh, for a while, um, they had different partners and they never sold their own or had their own RIP software. So now they do. Well, we'll cover that in just a second, too. And I've got that slide coming up. The next or the third category that I kind of came at was truly entering the professional or the production phase. These are these are bigger printers. These are serious printers. You're gaining momentum. What can you give us a brief summary on these two? So the, the 6370 and the 7200, for, to a certain extent, I, we call these or I call them at least the bread and butter printers. This is the printer where if you have an established business and either you're already uh, doing DTG or you're doing vinyl and you really want to expand and, and do some, some more volume product, mm -hmm. these two printers are fantastic for that because you've got a wider format at 44 inches and 64 inches for the 7200. You've got larger bags of ink You've got more affordable in terms of that and the paper comes in really long rolls. So now you've got a system put together where you can run this thing day in and day out and make a lot of money. With it. That's what production and professional uh, businesses wanna hear. And so the final or the fourth little segment here of our categories, we've got the expert or the industrial. These are enormous printers, quite honestly, in my world. Um, <laughs> what, what do you think about these uh, four categories, Amy, and ending and rounding this expert and industrial category? What, yeah, what's... so so the expert and industrial, you know, actually the, the F9470, um, it, 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 it straddles profession, professional and production a little bit too, because there are customers who like the 9470 for its speed because it is a dual printhead. Um, and of course, the 9470H has fluorescent inks in it, which is a whole, whole different world for people, for costuming, cool. swimsuits, and other items where fluorescent inks really shine on, on fabrics. Um, now, the F170 and 170H, 76 inches wide. So let's Ooh. measure that. That's <laughs> enormous. Yeah. That's one big printer. These are definitely the industrial printers. And these are for people who are making bolts of fabric all day long. And they're making blankets by the hundreds, if not by the thousands. Wow. This is for manufacturing purchases. This is not, this is not a, uh, a $500 startup printer. <laughs> <laughs> no, this it's is 100. 180 degrees the other way. So. But you know what's interesting about Epson is, is that 
and and perhaps some of our customers really aren't don't know enough about Epson's um, full fullness of their company. But you know, Epson makes everything from a little twelve inch printer all the way up to four in four feet by eight foot printers. And wow. so, so they, they cover just about every need of a customer in the graphics arts. And that's what's important. So coming out with the 170 and then coming out with the 170 really rounds out the dye sublimation line. So there is something for everyone. And I think that's what Epson wanted to make that's sure a they had. Great, that's a great way, Amy, to consider these printers. So let's dive in a little bit. Let's, we're gonna go in reverse order today. I decided that we would just go, we'll start with the big ones. Um, and then we'll work our way back down so we can talk a little bit about, you know, what's going on, maybe a little more specifically. So the first slide I have truly are these larger, I mean, you can tell us as much as you want, just give us the overview, but like the size, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the difference between these two, maybe who, who's likely to buy these printers. Um, and if you want to throw out some ballpark pricing, we're not here to sell today, but just so people can kind of get some knowledge. Yeah, a viewpoint of where we are. Yeah, right, for perspective. Exactly. Well, for perspective, this is the, this is the $90,000 range. Ooh. How's that for perspective? Okay. How's that? I could buy a car or I could buy one of these, right? Is that what you're saying? But if you're making drapery and you're making custom apparel and bedding and blankets and signage, which is very big now, and even shower curtains, you're making them by the hundreds and thousands. That's really where you want to go with this printer. Um, yes, there's a fluorescent available. So you can now add that, that extra to something. And you think about that when you're talking about, you know, shower curtains, you see those, they are, mm -hmm. they're wild these days. There's a lot of pop-up stores over the last, yeah. really throughout the, the quarantine COVID years, as we'll probably call them, where people were doing a lot of e-commerce, a lot of designing and a lot of selling online. And I saw a lot of those types of, of, of large blankets, matching sets of, of uh, design, interior design sets of um, you know, throw pillows to blankets to, like you said, even shower curtains. And, and, and so the H, Amy, on the H on this, that's what signifies or designates it as a... That is a, the fluorescent. So what, what happens here is that um, you've got a fluorescent yellow and a fluorescent pink, in addition to your standard yellow and your magenta. Okay. So that's how that works. I can see, I can see the left is the, uh, the, the 170 mm -hmm. and the one on the right has, is the 170H. Right. So you can see in the slides that yeah. it has six, right? One, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six large boxes of bulk ink. Yeah. And on that little caddy or that little trolley, how cool is that? Yeah, pretty neat, right? Well, now, the other interesting thing is, let's talk about the size of the ink. So the ink comes in either three liter bags or 10 liter bags. Mm. That's a lot of ink. You got it. So That's these amazing. are designed to run 24 seven. In addition, the printers have four print heads in them. So wow. when you think about the speed that you'll get with four print heads, I mean, this is, these are, these are workhorses to the nth degree. So you're talking about running them all night long. And these are places that do run three shifts, of course. Wow. Because to be in this type of business, you have to. Well, so let's, let's so if that's our expert, if that's the top of the ladder, that's as high as we go, as big as we go, and as, as expensive as we go. Thank you for describing like who might, who might be in the market for that. It's probably a small percentage to be, to be truthful mm -hmm. and fair and honest. Right. But let's go to where we know a little bit more because we have... We have several customers who, who own these printers, one or both or many. Um, so this is that next category down, still in a high volume type atmosphere. Is that mm -hmm. fair to say, Amy? Yeah, it's, it's, it's dual print heads. So instead of four print heads, now you have two print heads, which is still so fast. Again, these are designed for people who want to get out a lot of work in a short period of time. And if you look at the design of these printers, you have two bays of ink, you see? So mm -hmm. you have CMYK twice, uh, gotcha. in the case of the standard 9470 uh, on the left. 
and you have CMYK, but then you also have a fluorescent yellow and a fluorescent ink in the case of the printer on the right. Now, these are 1.5, uh, one and a half liter bags of ink. So the ink bags are a little smaller than the previous model, mm -hmm. uh, but you've got two bays. So that's how you get the productivity that way. Now, these are great for companies that are doing similar to what we talked about with the F-170. Uh, you can still do your blankets and your shower curtains and, and bedding and things like that. Sports apparel, signs, you know, signage is, is getting very big for dye sublimation. Indeed. Everywhere you go, you see soft signage. Yeah, I have. I just went to several trade shows at the beginning of the year, <clears throat> including our own cool new backdrop. Um, and uh, it was a soft signage system and it was dye sub printed and it looked awesome. The colors popped. Um, and I saw a lot more people doing that because I don't know if it's just a trend. I don't know if it honestly, I don't I don't know if it's a trend, the color, the cost. Um, the the uh, ease in transporting them because they're lighter. Yes, yes, and yes. Oh, so there you go. So that's especially that's especially the ease in transporting. If you can roll something up and ship fabric instead of hard signs, you know how much money you're going to save on shipping alone. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. that's a very big deal. Um, the 9470 and the 9470H are also great for customers who are doing small items but want to do hundreds and thousands of them, like. My favorite category, socks. <laughs> yes, I have seen you with those socks. That's Personalized cool. socks are a very big market and you can, you can go on the internet and you can order socks today and probably have them in a day to a day and a half. And you can put your dog's face on them or in my case, my cat's face on them or your child or anything. And these are the types of printers that the companies are using to print those jobs because they can gang up across 64 inches, lots and lots of socks. Yeah, and really. because this is a roll to roll printer, they're taping it to the cardboard core and it is just running. So hundreds of socks can be printed in a matter of honestly minutes. Wow. I noticed the printer on the right, the 9470H, mm -hmm. you can see those really bright yellows and, and, and magentas. So those look like the neons, but it looks like it's set up for cut and sew. Is that another, is that, that another big audience? Big part of it. So cut and sew in this case is, is huge. Number one for athletic wear, any exercise wear, um, uh, you've got team sports. That's also very, very big for cut and sew. And there are a little, lot of clothing designers out there who have their own line. They're designers by trade, and but they want to do the whole piece of it. So they're doing the cut and sew here. And now what they're doing is they're taking it on that take up reel, which is cardboard. They're bringing it over to the calendar heat press and they're webbing it with the fabric. And it automatically will transfer an entire bolt of fabric of cut and sew. So mm -hmm. this is a, a great way that a lot of the sewing and the manufacturing is being done now. These are, and it's only and, the US, I might add. Okay, great. And, and again, just remind me how wide about how are these as wide as big as the other ones or are these? These are 64 inches wide okay. and a standard bolt of fabric is 60 inches. So you see the size fits very nicely. Mm -hmm. There's two sizes really for standard bolts, 54 and 60. So these printers are fabulous for making bolts of fabric. Well, those are great printers. Those, those are really the leader for us. We, we, have, we have each of these in our showroom in New Jersey. So uh, for those of you who would love to stop by, make an appointment, and Amy could give you a, a tour and uh, give you some insights and print some samples, right, Amy? That would be- oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Show you also, I that. might add that the Epson Edge software runs them. So you get a lot of uh, good features with that, which you need when you get to this level. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. so let's fast forward to our next slide. <laughs> We're gonna go to our world of what I would say for me, and I don't mean to be limiting in any way. I just can, I can wrap my brain around these two printers. These are printers <laughs> that I've seen. These are printers that I've used on a, on a, on a few small occasions. Um, again, we have both of these printers in our showroom in New Jersey. At one point we had one of the 6370s here in, in Arizona. Um, uh, so tell us about these. These seem like 
You said bread and butter, I think is what you referred to them yeah. as, is that fair? Yeah, these, these I love these two. I, honestly, I'll talk about the F-7200. You know, this is an unsung hero in my opinion. And I say that because um, not a lot of people realize that everything they can do with this printer. It is a 64 inch printer but it does not have the dual print head speed of the 9470, which keeps the price very affordable, which is something to remember. It is great for people doing one-off designs, great for people who wanna do customized blankets and, and the like. It's mm -hmm. also wonderful for people doing metal photography. This oh, okay. I, I've seen those. Those are impressive. This is the printer because you can make huge metal plates using this printer and a large heat press. And it's you're doing it at a very affordable price. This printer is under $15,000. Wow, that is affordable. And you know what, Amy, I failed to ask you in the, in the, in the slide previous. So let me go back. What range are these two printers? Are they? These are, are in they... the twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar range. Okay, okay. So Depending still not, eight, you know, not mind blowingly expensive, no, but yet not at all. Uh, uh, a significant uh, investment. But if this one, the seventy-two hundred, you said is about fifteen thousand dollars. That's it. Fifteen thousand dollar range. Okay. So that's very affordable for people who want to do larger sizes. Or so does how, bang up a more. You know. And so, how do these two then compare? So that then I would take it that the sixty three seventy is half as much, or the sixty three seventy. Yes, it's in the it's in the sixty nine to seventy four ninety five that area of price range. So that's why both of these printers are are very affordable um, for what they produce. And the, and the smaller one, the sixty three seventy, is is about. Obviously, I can see it, but it's what, is, what are the dimensions? Okay, 44. 44 inches wide. So it is a workhorse, honestly, um, for the smaller company, for the smaller client. You know, you can do great cut and sew with this if you've got a line where you don't need to, to do thousands of cut and sew. This is a great printer for that. You can do the patterns here. If you want to gang up, if you're in the sock business, but you're not in the mega sock business, you can gang up your socks. <laughs> if, you're, if you're testing the sock market, <laughs> you're not ready to go all in yet. You don't have thousands of orders every day. Um, right. This is also great if you want to do all over shirts. Either model is great because when you're doing all over shirts, you have to remember that the shirt has to lay flat on the heat press with these right. sleeves. Good point extended. So you do need a larger sheet of paper for dye sublimation. So either one of these printers works very well for all over uh, designs on clothing that way. So and, you and get a lot of use out of these. The F7200 on the right, can I still do a bolt of fabric on that printer? You can. Okay. You can. That's a roll to roll printer. It's just a, it's just a little bit slower and it's not right. as uh, the, but the ink cartridges, are they the, the, are each are the same? That's the okay. beauty of this Epson lineup. No matter what price point you're in and what size printer um, of the 6370 and up, the inks are the same. You get a high density black ink. You get the CMY. Um, they're all the same inks. So you know that you're going to get the same quality. Quality does not change based on the models or the price point. Awesome. Okay. So guess what? You had started to talk to us a little bit about this. And, and when we first had this kind of overview conversation two years ago, this was a brand new entry uh, in the lineup. This was something that was new at the time. Um, but since then, they've, they've updated it. Is that right? They've, they what have, have they done differently? What's the difference? They have. Well, it, it is essentially the same engine that it was when Epson first introduced it pre-COVID. It uses um, the inks that are gravity fed and they're 140 milliliter bottles. So you just turn them upside down and put them right in, very easy to use. This is good for anybody working out of their house. You can put this just about anywhere on a counter. And what they did is they added the software, the Edge Print Pro. 
And what's oh, nice about okay. the Edge Print Pro, it is, a, it is a RIP software. So it will process PostScript level three, which is important if you're designing out of Illustrator or any of the other programs. So what happens is with the Edge Print Pro, you get color profiles, which helps you get closer to the final color that you're, you're looking for. The guesswork is taken out of that. You also can gang up images in the software. Without this software, you would have to open a program, let's say like Photoshop and make a step and repeat file in Photoshop. Mm. And that can become a very large file and take you a long time. And it will take a long time to process because it's processing each individual printer. But with the RIP software, you can gang up the same image. So essentially, the RIP is telling the printer, print this, process once, but print mm. many. That's great insight. Thank you for sharing that. I, I have not considered that. So uh, yeah. see, I'm sitting here taking a few notes going, oh, that was a really good point, Amy. I love that. Yeah. Um, cool. So obviously, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So in terms of pricing, what has changed with this print pro version of the F570? Well, this one is, uh, it went up, um, so it's $28.95, but with the, with the promotions that they're having now, it's $26.95. So well so it under- It comes with everything. Well comes, under 3,000. Oh, it, definitely. And it comes with three rolls of paper. It comes with two sets of ink, and now it comes with the rip. So when you talk about a complete turnkey, you don't get more turnkey. Um, I might add back to the 6370 and the 7200, they all come turnkey. Okay. They all come with a full set of ink, and they all come with the rip, and um, that way you are ready to go. And what's the width, the max width on this printer? This is 24 inches wide, okay. you which is you a said very that nice size because once again, with the rip, you can gang up your images. So if you're making coasters, and I, I think this sample may be showing that, but those might end up as coasters or something. If you're making coasters, again, you can gang up coasters and you can use a template. And then if you have a jig for the coasters, you can make a big batch of coasters all at once in your heat press. So this will allow you to be that productive, to get it banged out really fast, lay it down against your jig, make them all at once and you're ready to go. That's, that's a wonderful idea. Um, what, what, uh, who is this really for? Who would you, who would you say Epson was, who, who did they have in mind when they made this printer? Honestly, I, I think this printer is a great mate to anybody who has an F2100. Okay. I think somebody who's doing direct-to-garment printing um, or even direct-to-film to a certain extent would, would get a lot of use out of this and make a lot of extra money. Because for the jobs that are being done with direct-to-garment, anything that's being printed on a shirt can then be moved over to a hard substrate. Mr. Customer, I can give you a I can give you a beautiful tote bag. I can give you I can give you mugs. I can give you coasters. I can give you keychains. I can give you a metal photograph. All of these products go along with that beautiful shirt they're making on the twenty one hundred. I like that. And That's anyone who is in um, making vinyl transfers now and they're weeding and they're doing all of that, which is taking them forever they can move over to this or add this at a very low investment and increase what they can offer to their clients. Yeah, I think it would be a great brother, sister, tandem, duo, mm -hmm. dynamic duo, however you wanna phrase that. For, for all of our customers who have F2100s, um, this would make a ton of sense. And like you said, it's it's the bar, the entry level, it's, it's still very affordable. We had a wonderful question. Actually, two have popped up since. Hopefully, I can ask you these now. Um, specific to the F570, um, can adhesive paper be used with that printer? The um, Well, I'll answer that by saying Epson does not make an adhesive dye sublimation paper. Okay. Uh, Epson, the, the paper of choice in this one would be the, their multi-purpose paper. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why you would want an adhesive paper because you're transferring the ink on that paper to a different substrate. 
So I'm not sure why. I well, maybe we can, why. Uh, for fabric was the response, as you can see there, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I was going to, I was going to guess it was for cut and sew and that's what everybody's popping in on saying. Right. To... So, but you're maybe... taking the multi-purpose paper that's coming out of the F570 and you're mating it with your piece of fabric right in a heat press. And so maybe it's something for us to explore. Um, it sounds like it sounds like a lot of folks are doing this maybe with other systems or because they're using a smaller printer and they don't want that paper to be, you know, moving around. And so that adhesive gives them uh, potentially a if little bit more. We're talking about adhesive so it doesn't move. Right. Um, it keeps, keeps it from shifting, keeps it from. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah. So Epson does make a transfer adhesive paper. Um, it's called textile adhesive. It's not adhesive, you know, there's it's no stickiness. It's, it's got a little tooth to it if you okay. feel it. So it won't slide off the fabric so quickly. That's, okay. I guess, where we're going with this. And absolutely, that paper is available from Epson. If you do that in conjunction with your copper tape, um, it won't slide off. And a lot of fabrics are very, very smooth. We use that in our showroom when we're transferring onto nice polyester uh, satins, especially. They're very slippery. But yes, <laughs> they, do have, they do have the watch textile adhesive. Watch out for those satins. They're very slippery. Well, it sounds like you, you answered the question perfectly. Thank you for the question in the chat. That was wonderful. Love the interactivity. Um, but I, I need to add something. And I, this may be too, I, I'm going to say it anyway. Because you know me, I say what I think. There's not a lot of filters with um, Amy. Just, just go ahead and share it. The, um, the, the adhesive textile paper comes in rolls. And the rolls are on a two, uh, three inch core. So if you buy an adhesive textile roll of paper, and you can get that in 17 inches or 24 inches, you may have to cut them to sheets to use them. Oh, OK. Well, I'm glad and the printer that. does take cut sheet sizes. Especially the F570. That's yes. one of the advantages. Yes, it yeah, yes, it both. It does both. You can do a roll or you can do, or cut, you can sheet. do cut sheet. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's a versatile printer, that little F570. No wonder yeah. a lot of, we've had a lot of activity over the last two years, a lot of questions, a lot of sales, um, but it seems like it fits the market well. Mm -hmm. um, well, guess what? We've got one more. We've got the, the littlest one uh left are are <laughs> rounding in uh this is this is the smallest in the lineup and like i said i'm not being disrespectful everybody starts at zero um if this was where some of you maybe have this printer or if you're thinking about you just want to as amy say put your toe in the water this is the f-170 amy what should we know about it well what you should know about it is that the inks are the same as the 570, so you're not giving up quality. This is what's important to understand with Epson, even though they're making different sizes and different uh, for different processes, the inks are not. So you're getting the same quality on the F170 as you get on the F570. What you don't get is the RIP software, the edge print software, Mm -hmm. um, so what you would have to do here is you would print out of your, um, your program. Program. So if I, if I were a Photoshop or CorelDRAW or Illustrator, just depending on what I'm using, right. I'm going to basically use it as a print driver and just send it exactly. straight Exactly. The Epson okay. print driver comes with this. And there are a lot of settings in an Epson print driver, which are good and sometimes not so good because you can make a lot of changes and have trouble getting the same result twice. <laughs> but I always say anyone who does not have a RIP, if you're printing out of the Epson with an Epson driver software, keep a pad next to your computer and write down the exact settings as you choose them in the driver. That way you make sure, yes, you can save them and give them custom names and all of that. But I, I like to have backup. So I tend to write things down still in this day and age. And that way you can keep track of the different settings because you're going to want to do some testing with this. Because there's no rip, you don't get the color management features, which means you're going to want to do a few different tests with some of the settings in the driver and mm -hmm. see which ones work best for the substrates you're using. And so keep track of it that way. But the same types of products can be made with this as the 570. You can make mugs and keychains and coasters, and you can make soft goods. 
Uh, you can do, you know, bandanas. This is great for bandanas. Um, there you go. Perfect size. I would wear a bandana. <laughs> My dog wears a bandana. See, uh, so a lot of doggies. <laughs> a lot of dogs. They're cute. It's a great. Yeah. That's a great. That's a great uh, segue into what I was going to ask you. Um, so before I do, I've got two questions. One, what is the price range of this smaller printer? The smaller printer is three hundred and ninety nine dollars. Wow, that is very affordable. Um, it does not include the paper, is that right? You have to buy that. It separately? does not include paper. It does include the ink, but not paper. And okay. the paper comes in sheets. You can get eight and a half by eleven or eight and a half by fourteen. This has become such a popular printer that Equipment Zone has put it on our online store, and we have literally sold. I'm not even going to tell you how many. <laughs> it's more than hundreds. Um, and I'm not bragging, I'm just saying it's become very, very popular for those that are seriously just trying to figure it out. Should I do this? Can I add this? People are crafty. People, people have had time on their hands and they've wanted to explore. And they, like you, Amy, they had that, you know, that visceral feeling, that emotional connection with making something. And so rather than have to spend, you know, $3,000, they're spending under 500 and, you know, they can play, they can, they can test the water, they can put their toe in the pool. Right, exactly. And I will say that they are out of stock now, um, but we are expecting more in by the end of the month. And that's a really important point. And that's, thank you for bringing it up. I was literally going to not end on this, but ask you in all of these situations with all of these printers, we should be checking with an equipment zone representative with you, Amy, right? Because it's a fluid situation. It is. It okay. is. You know, the world situation has changed so much for us. And the last few months have really shipping and deliveries and containers. And, you know, there's a very, uh, very funny picture that went around the internet. It showed uh, the ocean. And in the ocean showed all these little squares. And all these little squares were containers. <laughs> and the, the caption read, you know, your, your item is out here somewhere. <laughs> Just your, printer, your printer is on that one right there. Your printer is on that container right there. <laughs> but um, you show up and, you know, we do keep on top of it on a regular basis. Well, right. And we had them in stock for months and months and we literally just sold oh, through yeah. that inventory. So And the good news is because we are such a large reseller and we are a national reseller, you know, we do get the lion's share of product. So. We are a little greedy, like not greedy. We have earned that position. Um, yeah, you know. Thank you for reminding our audience. I think it's important that they do know that this is something that we are a nationwide reseller and we have inventory sooner than most because of our, you know, because of our, we've earned it because the 16 years doing this, right? So all of that adds up and our expertise, um, having uh, a sales department and a training department. And sometimes, and like in cases like today, they cross over. So Amy is in sales, but obviously, as you can tell, uh, is extremely well informed and understands um, the different models, which inks, which softwares, um, you know, tacky <laughs> roles versus non-tacky roles, all of that good stuff. Amy, I have a, an important, this is what I wanted to, to end on because we did cover a few things that have changed. We covered some new models, new, um, new, new things were added to the lineup. I think it's really, I don't know if it's ironic or just interesting. They added the smallest of the printers and the largest of the printers in, in the two years since our last uh, review. So I don't know, maybe, maybe there's something there. Maybe there's a message there or not. Um, so you could you can spend five hundred dollars or over fifty thousand dollars. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> but but something let's, for let's, everybody. Yeah, something for everybody. It's a giant buffet table, and there's a little something for everybody. Um, but but maybe we can cover a few points, a few bullet points of what has not changed. What are some of the great things that we're proud of in our relationship and our partnership with Epson? And it is more than just a vendor relationship. I mean, we are in constant communication with Epson, lots of meetings, lots of webinars, lots of um, testing and training. So what, what hasn't changed? And I'll, I'll put up this first bullet and maybe you can talk a little bit about this. Okay. Well, it's funny you say that about, you know, our closeness with Epson. I, I have to tell you that I have been selling Epson printers now since 1980 something. 
That's all I was. <laughs> <laughs> the previous century? What? The first professional photographic printer that Epson came to market with. I worked for a company that became the first reseller of this product. And um, the print quality back then was second to none. <laughs> and the print quality today is second to none because of the printhead technology and the way that Epson couples that with ink. Um, you know, Epson printheads are the best in the industry. They, um, the micro TFP printhead right now is only available from Epson. It is not available from other companies. So when other companies say we have our own dye sublimation printer, uh, or DTG printer for that matter, and it's an Epson printhead, it may very well be, but it could very well be one of those older printheads of the stuff that I was selling back in the late 80s or 90s. <laughs> I hope not, but it could <laughs> that be. That was still out there. <laughs> so the print quality with Epson is always number one for them. Uh, the fast print speeds, because of the way that they design their, their printheads, um, the large size print heads for the 9470 and the 170 gives you really fast print speeds. And even the F170 and the F570, if you notice the way they look, they look a little different than the other models. Uh, if you look at the color and the way they're designed, those, those printers are substantially faster than a lot of the other dye sublimation printers on the market. Hmm. different kind of engine that Epson is using for those. I'm glad you brought that up. I, was, I, I had jumped to speeds. Yeah, well, I had jumped to the wrong conclusion and assumed that you would only be concerned about these fast print speeds if you were in the bigger printer lineup and you were in a production setting. But fast is still, you know, something we all care about. Time is, is, is relative, but it's precious. And so I think it's important. Obviously, those that are in a hardcore production environment are very concerned with print speed because it, it's really their profit. It's, you know, their labor is, is a big component of that. So. But think about it this way. If you have a 170 and you can only get one eight and a half, 11 sheet of paper out at a time, don't you want that to be as fast as possible? Because you're only able to get one job at a time. Hmm. Interesting. Um, sorry, I was I was just ch checking the chat. Yeah, no, that's that's great. So professional. Now I love that it's called professional software. <laughs> it's not just software. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, Epson is not going to come out with a software program that isn't of the highest level. Um, and Adobe PostScript Level 3 RIP software is of the highest level in the industry. And there are RIP softwares throughout the graphic arts industry um, in every type of market segment and um, all different brands out there. And I've sold many of them. And to have the Adobe PostScript Level 3 is the way to go. And so they know what they're doing. They've written the code properly. And of course, the ink. I mean, you know, you get vibrancy. I mean, everyone, what I love is that everyone looks at the dye sublimation printer and they only see four colors, C, M, Y, K. And they go, oh, but, but how am I going to get those bright colors? You know, with only C, M, Y, K, don't you have extra colors in there? And it's like, well, let's see how it looks after we transfer it. And boy, do those colors pop right off, no matter what product you're transferring to. So their ink technology is consistent. They've got a great shelf life, a two-year shelf life on their inks, and it's Epson branded. And the nice thing is that all these items from the ink up to the print quality, they all work in concert. So when, you, all, when you work together, you get better output, don't we? Absolutely. I, I mean, I cannot <laughs> emphasize that point enough. It was purpose-built engineers and designers working with Ink technology, print head technology, software technology, like you said, all coming together in concert so that it sounds a premium quality. So yeah. it is, it's, it's, we get to brag about it. Like we did it. We didn't do anything, Amy. We just, uh, we just can appreciate it. Right. So well, we, we just got lucky to be able to sell the best quality products in the marketplace. So what happens after the sale? So, well, support and, <laughs> and service and support after the sale, you know, 
that's probably, honestly, I think that's the most important part of it because, you know, whenever you buy something, it's a very emotional experience. You're giving somebody your money and that always, everybody always gets emotional when it comes to giving somebody your money. And what you don't want to have happen is you don't want that person to forget about you after the fact. Fair you want to know that if you pick up the phone, they're going to be there for you and they're not going to turn their back on you. So, well, at the risk of exposing this, but I think you know the answer, so I'm pretty confident in this. And if not, I know that someone at Equipment Zone would be happy to help. There was a very, very specific question about which side of the paper somebody had purchased the F-170 and got some extra supplies, and they, they were struggling to figure out which side do they use. So, Amy, that's come up several times. Do you, do you have the answer to give this wonderful person some clear advice at this point? <laughs> so that we can see their smile come through the chat. Well, generally speaking, whenever, sometimes it is difficult to see what side is right. There's two things you can do. First thing you can do is, is feel, okay? Now, some of us have, you know, calloused fingers. So you have to get somebody who's never done a hard day's work in their life, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> get somebody with really soft fingers. Why but, is everyone looking at me? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel a difference, okay? The back side of the paper is going to be super, super smooth, but the side that has the, the accessibility to the ink will feel a little different. The other thing you'll find is if you look at it very closely in very good light, you will see a difference in color between the back and the front. The okay. front should be wider. Okay. The other thing is that um, if you put a piece of paper down flat, the side that has a very slight curl up should be the what we used to call in the olden days, the emulsion side. That's the side that is prepared to receive the dye sublimation ink. Okay. That's so correct. It's, it has a little texture to it. It's a little white, whiter of color. And you might see those curling up that just side would a little bit I mean, it's just a little really bit. sometimes it's not easy to see and i understand the question yeah you get this piece of paper and you go huh which side do i print on it it looks the same to me but take a few minutes and really examine it and and you will see the differences so, sounds like we might have a future webinar planned <laughs> yeah why not <laughs> yeah why not well amy thank you so much we, we we've covered all of the questions uh, and, and you've done an outstanding job at giving us um, perspectives, insights, and we appreciate your time today. Um, we are lucky and, and quite often um, to, to be able to partner with Epson. Folks, if you didn't know this, we only sell Epson printers. Equipment Zone is dedicated to, to that line and that's it. We, we get requests all the time. We've just decided it's just been one of Harry's you know, nope, I'm just going to be selling Epson's period. And uh, we have a wonderful showroom in New Jersey. Um, we have a much smaller, but still kind of nice showroom in, in Arizona. Um, but I would, I would encourage everybody in the tri-state area, if, if you're within a couple hours of Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, definitely um, make a day trip, half a day trip, and come visit Amy in our showroom. Amy has been known to make wonderful samples. Um, personalized samples, so you would get to see every single printer, right, Amy? As far as I know, maybe maybe not the, the one hundred seventy. They come and go. I have to be honest; they do. Yeah, come and yeah, go. that's true. Thank you for reminding me. Sometimes Amy is she is in sales, folks, so um, they come and go. But we have most of those printers that you've seen here today, and uh, that will definitely um, be be an invitation. Amy, how how could people coordinate that with you? What's the best well, way to do that? I think that they can, they can send me an email. That's fine. I'd love to talk with people about this. Uh, one of the things, Jay, I, I hate to jump back, but, um, it behooves us to mention a little bit more about service and support. Oh, well, we for do. sure. Here, let me, let me pull it up. Go for it. I'm, I'm sorry to yeah, be a little distracted short. on that one. Um, it's important that you know that Number one, Epson has probably the best warranty in the industry for all of these pieces of equipment. They are a little different when it comes to the 570 and the 170. Um, that is a return to depot warranty, but all the others are on-site warranties. 
Um, yeah. Now, the other thing you should also know is that, you know, Equipment Zone probably has the largest support department for a reseller in the country. Our technical and support people are outstanding. And we have on our website, on our webpage, you can ask a technical question and get a support response that way, a support call from one of our techs, and they will help you through some of your questions. So we don't walk away from you when we're done. Uh, you know, we thank you for your business and we've got our online store for your supplies, but we also have bodies and people who are there to help you. Like Amy and others. And that was a great, great point. So I'm glad you didn't let me cut that one short. We are a click away. So for folks who were listening and weren't sure, we understand that you don't know all of the answers. Um, if you bought one of the larger printers, we probably would have spent more time because they're just by nature of how those deals go down. Um, Amy spent sometimes days, weeks, months in answering questions and doing samples and going back and forth. Um, if you bought one of the F-170s online, it doesn't mean we're ignoring you. Just all you have to do is reach back out to us online via technical support. Go to our website and you can get, get lots of answers. Um, we have a, a great team. Well, we're biased, let's be honest, but we think we have a great team. Um, so what I was going to say then, the final final was, please, for those of you who enjoyed this session, we have hundreds of others, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, tell your friends and neighbors, <laughs> as long as they're into DTG, die sub, inkjet technology, that's what our channel is all about. Um, and you'll see lots of uh, different subject matter experts, we do interviews all the time. Um, this session was recorded and it'll usually be 24 to 48 hours, but we'll add it to our YouTube channel soon. And then Amy, if people want to get in touch with you, these are the key contacts. You're on that list. How, how should this work? What would you say? Yeah, send an email. I'd love to talk with you about, you know, what you're looking to do or any questions that came up today that were not answered. Um, you know, look, we believe very, very strongly that and this is going to sound really trite, and I'm sorry if it does, but do you remember their Cy Sims years ago? We used to say an educated consumer is our best customer. So the point of it is, is we want to educate you prior to your purchase, because when you make your purchase, you're going to be that much more successful. And it's gotcha. important to us that you're successful. Well said. Agreed. Thank you for everybody who joined us today. We appreciate all the comments in the chat. Thank you, Tim, for doing a wonderful job. Tim was in the background being our, our silent helper in the chat. And we had some great feedback and some wonderful questions. Amy, thanks for your time and your expertise. Um, Looking forward you know, to the next one. Yeah, we're going to definitely spend some more time. That's what I wanted to end on is that people know we're going to. Oh, wait continue. a minute. We have to end on another note, Jay. Which is? Come um, visit us in Atlantic City. Yes. For those of you who are days away <laughs> from the Impressions Expo, we'd, we'd love to see you. We'll, we'll have our DTG lineup there in Atlantic City. Um, if, you, if you're watching this in the future, the show already happened. Maybe there's an upcoming show, but we trade shows are back. So we're all pretty excited. You have to understand that this has been three years. It's been three years since we've been back to uh, uh, a major show on the East Coast. So Amy will be there if you if you are exhibiting or, or excuse me, if you are attending, we are exhibiting. So we couldn't we couldn't be more excited. Great. OK, so that's it. I'll say goodbye for now. Thanks again, Amy. And for everybody who tuned in, another wonderful Equipment Zone webinar until we see each other again later. Bye bye for now. Bye now. Thanks, everyone.